Hello everyone and welcome to the Sochi 2014 Winter Paralympic Games. It is day nine of competition here at the Rosa Kuta Alpine Centre and it is Women's Giant Slalom Day. There are three categories being raced here today at the Rosa Kuta Alpine Centre. They are visually impaired, standing and sitting. And as always, the Giant Slalom medals decided over two runs, the combined time of both runs will determine who takes home gold, silver and bronze. The categories are based on the athletes' functional abilities and you will see athletes with different impairments competing against each other in the same category. And this is made possible by a results calculation system based on a mathematical formula which was instigated by the athletes many years ago. Now, the weather. It's been cold overnight. The... Uh, Snowpack is hard, but there is a lot of water in the snow from previous warm days. So as we get through the first runs, the track will start to soften. And we start with the women's giant slalom for the visually impaired category, uh, which hasn't got underway. That was a forerunner going down the uh, run. And uh, the news we are getting from the top of the mountain is that Jade Eddington of Great Britain, who has four medals already to her name in these Winter Paralympic Games, is a non-starter today due to illness, but we will wait confirmation of that. She's due to be second out of the gate, but uh, as we understand it, she will not be uh, starting this race. Here is the first run start list for the women's giant slalom visually impaired just the 10 athletes going the defending paralympic champion is number one and you Bakasova, while uh, the world champion in giant slalom is the russian alexandra franceva then we will have the women's giant slalom for the standing category and uh, the outstanding skier to watch out for here, number nine, Marie Beauchet of France. But uh, she is the reigning para world champion. But Andrea Roffus, double silver medalist at the, the Vancouver Paralympic Games and at the para world championships. She will get the women's giant slalom for the standing category uh, underway a little later on. 20 athletes in total are uh, going in the standing category. And then that leaves us just with the final category, the sitting category. 12 athletes going in this and getting us underway is the defending Paralympic champion, Alana Nichols, but Claudia Loesch of Austria there, who goes uh, fourth. She is the defending Paralympic champion in this discipline. So there is the course looking up towards Bears Brow and the course profile is this 47 gates over a vertical drop of 344 meters 343 meters excuse me and it's set by one of the German coaches Justus Wolf who incidentally does a lot of work with Anna Schaffelhuber who goes in the sitting category and is looking for a fourth gold a fifth gold medal excuse me of these Paralympic Winter Games, what a performance that would be. Day nine of competition then, uh, the Winter Paralympic Games gets underway with the women's giant slalom in the visually impaired category and the first skier out of the hut is Henrietta Bakasova, the defending Paralympic John Slalom champion with her guide Natalia Sovatova. There are three categories within the visually impaired, three classes within the visually, visually impaired category, B1, B2 and B3. Now let's have a look at this course. That is the Bears Brow Jump and a very tight technical course that has been set by Justus Wolf of Germany. The uh, snow has pretty much disappeared off the racing line. It is bullet hard out there, and it is a very, very technical, incredibly difficult course. And this 
is the most difficult section of the lot. Over the late jump. Very hard, a lot of ruts, very bumpy. And for Carter doing a great job. You can hear the ice under the skis. Now, as they come off the late jump, we'll get a time check. Now, the downhill and Super G, they went straight on in the giant slalom. They bear off to the left, and from here on in, it's not as steep, but it is equally as technical. And for Carter being very positive on her opening run. And her guide, Natalia Sabatova, doing a good job. A gold medalist in the downhill, disqualified in the Super G. And third in the slalom. What can Fakasova do in giant slalom? And the answer is stop the clock at 128.62. So a decent time for Fakasova. He's in the B3 class. Now there is no Jade Etherington in the start hut, so we move on to Lindsay Ball of the United States of America, skiing in the B1 class. Now this is for skiers who are either blind or have a very low visual acuity. By way of explanation, their level of visual acuity is such that the athlete cannot recognize a capital E that is 15 by 15 centimeters in size from a distance of 25 centimeters. Now, during the race, they are required to wear eye shades, so there is no light going into the goggles of Lindsay Ball. And uh, the 22-year-old doing a good job with her guide, who is Diane Barras. And just gets a little wrong on that line through the blue gate, but gets it back, no problems at all. And showing some good pace here is uh, Ball. Now, off the Bears' brow, they come onto a, a, a flatter section. Now this, as you can see, a flatter part, but it's going to get very steep in two gates time. Now it'll be interesting to see how Ball deals with this very, very steep section. She's going to... Oh no, she's out. And Lindsay Ball is down. And is okay, and she will take no further part in the giant slalom. Oh, it's up there. To get a pole back. It is very, very difficult, that Going? steep section. Going? Going? What happened? Let's have another look. As she comes in here, she just gets too much speed late in the line. And if you get off the racing line outside of that blue die, there's so much snow that... Uh, it banks up and she's just hit it and it's just catapulted her over the top. So disappointment for Ball. She's the national chance island champion from 2012 for the US. <laughs> Sadly, she will take no further part in these Winter Paralympic Games. Go. That's Stacey Manella, the United States. And uh, while Lindsay Ball is uh, taken off the racing line out of harm's way, we'll have a slight pause in proceedings. The Dutch, as they have been throughout, looking very bright and colourful and here to cheer their athletes. quite windy here today so we might well get a change in the weather a little later on Woo. quick pan around but now we are ready for Jessica Gallagher of Australia who is third in the giant slalom World Cup standings this 
season. She has one win to her name. That was in uh, Copper Mountain in the United States in January. She competed at London Summer Paralympic Games in 2012 in Javelin and Long Jump. She was the first Australian athlete to compete at the Summer and Winter Paralympic Games. And she will be skiing in the B3 class, which describes the least severe visual impairment eligible for alpine skiing. Eligible athletes either have a restricted visual field of less than 40 degrees diameter or a low visual uh, acuity. Uh, Jessica Gallagher will be skiing the technical disciplines of slalom and giant slalom. Seventh in uh, the slalom earlier in the Paralympics, the Winter Paralympics. And uh, Lindsay Ball still makes her way to uh, a safe point on the piste. So we are to keep, uh, we are keeping silence because so yeah, she is just there leads the way so at the bottom of the piste and uh, she'll be there or thereabouts. The fastest skier is going in reverse order in the second run. And depending on how many finish, it will depend if the whole field is put into reverse okay. order or uh, just the top uh, few. You can see there the wind just buffeting the gates. It is a lot windier than it has been. And Ball has now made it safely down to the bottom of the track and gets a warm round of applause. And we are ready to go again. Jessica Gallagher, that's the one minute call from the timekeeper. Uh, Christian Geiger, a guide, about to take on this very, very difficult, technical, icy giant slalom course. 47 gates in total. And Gallagher. Can she improve on her seventh place finish in the slalom? Look at the flags there behind the start hut. Buffeted by the wind. And Gallagher about to pole out of the start hut. And Christian Geiger gets into the course. The opening few gates on the part of the track called Bear uh, for Big Pan. And then they set up and come up and over Bear's Brow here. Now, this is a very difficult gate, this blue gate, but uh, Gallagher gets around that no problem at all. And she's skiing a nice high line, getting close to those gates, doing a lot of the work above the gate, which is key in the technical disciplines. And Gallagher does well on the Bear's Brow pitch. Now the relatively flat section that links Bear's Brow and the late jump. And now she's into the toughest part of the course. Very narrow here. It's a very little option for the course setter to uh, set a pattern of gates that can avoid the ruts and bumps caused by previous races. And Gallagher stops the clock just over a minute. 3.89 off the pace of the Sarkova. These two skiing in the same category. You're getting an idea of how good the Carcelis time was when she opened up proceeding. Now these final turns. Pretty rhythmical. There's no real catch gate to uh, put the skiers off their rhythm inside of the finish. And Gallica will get a time, which is eight seconds just over off the pace of, yeah, of Sarkova. 136.69, she goes into second place. 136.69.
Now, next to ski is Kelly Gallagher of Great Britain and her guide, Charlotte Evans. Gallagher, who became the first ever Britain to win Paralympic gold in the Super G on this track. Looking to try and improve on her recent outings in Slalom and Super Combined, which she didn't get to the bottom of. She was disappointed with the performance in that, but what can she do here? She's skiing in the B3 class. And Charlotte Evans goes over the terrain change onto the steeps of the lake jump. Now, Gallagher. Whoa, no, she's had equipment failure. Her right ski has just popped off on the downside of the lake jump and Kelly Gallagher let's have another look the ski just comes off it hits a big bump and disappears well really unfortunate for Kelly Gallagher but her winter Paralympic Games come to an end on lake jump and disappointments for friends, family and supporters and for the Great Britain coaching staff but uh, we've seen a number of skis detach from skiers boots in, uh, over the course of these Winter Paralympics and you just heard there the British coach saying nothing wrong with it but sometimes these ruts and bumps just hit the ski at the wrong angle and the binding releases. But uh, that'll be of little consolation to Kelly Gallagher. So five should have started. One was a non-starter. Two have fallen. And two have finished. So a high attrition rate in that. Uh, this opening race of the giant slalom but what it will mean is those that are to come if they get to the bottom they've got themselves a chance of a winter paralympic medal here the casper leads the way by over eight seconds currently and, uh, the timing intervals in the visually impaired category are such that one athlete gets to the bottom before the next goes. And the Russian coaches wait because Alexandra Fransova, the double gold medalist, is about to leave the gate. So, Alexandra Fransova, four medals in these Winter Paralympic Games. Bronze in the downhill, silver in the Super G, gold in slalom and super combined. She is the reigning para world champion. And her guide is Pavel Zabatin. Lot of medals uh, during this Olympic Winter Games 2014 here in uh, Rosa Kutor in Sochi. Bronze medal in downhill, silver medal in Super G, Zalom, gold medal in Right. So, Franceva and Zabatin are on track now. They know that a medal is very much within their grasp with all that's gone before being in the B2 class, which includes athletes that are able to recognize the capital letter E, 15 centimeters by 15 centimeters from a distance of four meters. France are very late in the line. And a really good job to get it back on track. 1.24 off the face of Vakasova. And that big mistake would be a large chunk of that 1.24 seconds. Now, transfer into these final turns. 
Pavel Zavitin has to stay within two gates of his skier, otherwise the pair will be disqualified. Zavitin doing a good job of showing France of a down. 128-62 won't be beaten. And Francovic goes second, 4.96 off the pace, almost five seconds behind for Karsava. Uh, Russia looking odds on to pick up yet another medal in the Alpine disciplines. Good skiing from Francovic. She did really well to pull the line back off that big mistake at the bottom of the middle part of the late jump pitch. And Franz of it makes her way into the finish area. And now Melissa Parent of Australia. The next to go, she leads the World Cup standings in Giant Slalom. No medals in 2010, best of fifth in the downhill in Vancouver. Here, no medals either, best of fourth in the downhill. First Australian female alpine skier to win a medal at the World Championships, the Power World Championships, and she too has a ski detachment and goes down. And another skier, similar to Kelly Gallagher of Great Britain. And she sets off down the track. Fortunately, the second ski detaches pretty quickly. But a hair-raising moment for Melissa Perrin as she disappears down the course. And with three to go, there's only three finishers. So a real chance for the likes of Stacey Manella, Yang Ye Rim and Millie Knight to perhaps get amongst the medals. But Jessica Gallagher of Australia currently in third place. And the last three to ski are the three lowest ranked skiers in the competition. Lavatin, uh, France of it, just having a chat. But, uh, well, we said it was tough, we said it was icy, we said it was bumpy, and the late jump has accounted for two. In fact, all three of the non finishers ball came to grief on it. Gallagher, that's Kelly Gallagher of Great Britain, and Melissa Parent have all perished on the backside of the lake jump. Well, the coaches in the finish area will be hot on the radio back up to the start hut to tell the athletes about the late jump. The usual Canadian psych up, a group session, listening to some music. Andrea Rothfuss of Germany. Just going through her final warm up. And the British supporters wait for young Millie Knight, who goes 10th and last in the visually impaired category. So, this visually impaired category in the women's giant slalom is proving very very difficult we said it was tough but it is really showing its teeth in the opening six skiers only three have completed so next to go stacy manella of the united states and kim sievers a guide skiing in the B3 class, first major competition. And Manella just 17 right, years Three, of two, age. And she's on course. Let's have another look at this top section. This 
very innocuous, just some rhythmical tight turns, alternate, alternating red and blue gates. So then the course starts to show its teeth here over the bear's brow, this very difficult blue-red combination at the top of the pitch, which uh, Manella does uh, no problem with. And you see these two skiing a lot closer together than, say, Zabatin and Franciva. Manella in the B3. Class. Now the late jump. Let's have a little look at the wind. Look how breezy it is. Whoa, now she goes wide around that red gate and that's probably going to help her out because we've seen the big ruts on the inside causing some problems and Manella doing a good job. Okay, she's 8.45 off the pace but a lot of skiers haven't even managed to get this far. Obviously, they have a system where Manella shouts once she passes the gate. And a good job being done by Kim Sievers. And Manella looks as if she's going to get to the bottom of this first run. 128.62 comes and goes. 136.69. Oh, Jessica Gallagher comes and goes. But Manella is down. And she sets the time of. 144 66 16 seconds off the pace who knows what might happen in run two good job by manella now yang ye rim of korea and her guy lee ji yul second lowest ranked skier in the competition now into bears brow the first Winter Paralympic Games. Skiing the technical discipline. Didn't get a result in the slalom. What can she do in the giant slalom? Very tight between the gates. No area for the skier to relax, apart from maybe these three gates here. But as soon as they get to this blue gate, you've got to set up for the late jump. Oh, she catches her right arm in the gate, but manages to have enough strength to ski for it now will she avoid that big rut well she hits it but the skis stay on and she's getting very straight in the line and she's not afraid to tuck it in now good performance here from yang just 2.2 off the pace yang yay rim of korea can she ski this bottom section cleanly and get close to well france of his time really Pekasova, our leader, way out in front. I'm not sure anybody's going to get close to her, but we said there are opportunities for these lower-ranked skiers because of all the non-finishes. And Yang looks like she's taking that opportunity here. 128.62 won't be beaten, but France for 133.58. Gallica is at 136.69. And she goes fourth to 13 hundredths off a bronze medal finish. So... Yang in the mix for a medal in the women's giant slalom visually impaired after the first run. Good job by Yang and Lee, some good skiing on the top section particularly. Now, Millie Knight and Rachel Ferrier of Great Britain in the B2 class. Millie Knight, the youngest athlete competing in the Alpine disciplines, just uh, 15 years of age. Now she too has an opportunity here. If she gets to the late jump, how will the right ski fare on that really big rut? And her teammate Kelly Gallagher lost her right ski. And Mr. Perrin lost the right ski. Now, here we go then. Setting up for this late jump pitch. The next red gate is the one that's been causing all the grief and they've gone wide. Oh, she comes inside it. She gets inside the ruck. Good skiing from Knight. Now, 56.88. Again, 
just needs to finish, give herself a chance. 5.45 off the pace. There's only five finishes. Now, can she squeeze in near Yang? Or will she be nearer Manella, who's 16 seconds off the pace of Kasakova? Millie Knight in the B2 class with Rachel Ferrier coming towards the end of the first run challenge. Four gates from home now. 128.62 comes and goes. 144.66 is Manella's time. And Knight goes fifth, 11 seconds off the pace. So she is uh, 2.8 behind Yang in four. So opportunities in the second run. Well done to Millie Knight and Rachel Ferrier of Great Britain. And they are in the mix for the second run. So a very difficult first run in the women's giant slalom visually impaired category. Ten were supposed to start, one was a non-starter, three didn't finish, and Henrietta Bakasova of Slovakia leads the way by almost five seconds from Franceva of Russia. Jessica Gallagher of Australia is in third, Yang Ye Rim of Korea fourth, Millie Knight, Great Britain fifth, Stacey Manella of the United States of America is in sixth. 